from Geneva. It is my pleasure to join your discussion on digital governance mechanisms. I hope you are navigating smoothly these uh, difficult times. COVID-19 uh, did for digitalization much more than 1000 conferences, policy papers and consultancy report. Digitalization is uh, here big time and it's here to stay. It is uh, expected that digital governance will uh, raise in uh, relevance in the forthcoming discussions. Some old issues in digital governance such as fake news uh, or cyber security got a new relevance. But also new issues emerged like most recently the question of contact tracing apps. As we are hopefully flattening the pandemic curve, digitalization is mainstreaming into our society and moving uh, our society much faster towards the age of digital interdependence as our time was described by the UN high-level report on digital cooperation. The panel's report outlined the main three models of digital governance uh, in the chapter four of the report. Before we move into discussion of the exactly of these three models, it's important to understand logic and the spirit behind the drafting of this part on digital governance. First, during very intensive consultations, we had more than 100 consultations, we've been trying to uh, step in the shoes of different actors, from governments, civil society and companies. And one of the underlying questions that has been mentioned in this consultation is the question, who do we call? when we have to deal with governance problems such as privacy, data protection or security. It uh, echoes the old uh, question that Kissinger asked, who do I call when I want to call Europe? Or apply to the current moment in the COVID-19 crisis, who do we call to deal with, for example, uh, contact tracing apps, which is becoming a huge governance issue. Uh, this is not only the question who we, do we call, but also who will pick up the phone. For example, on discussion of contact tracing, many actors have been ready to act, from Apple, Google, European Union Commission, many governments and international organizations, academic and civil society uh, organizations. There is a lot of goodwill, but goodwill uh, could also lead to a lot of uh, policy confusion. The question how to reduce confusion, how to increase coordination and facilitate action is of utmost importance. In the panel's work, we started by evaluating uh, the current situation and we, are, we, are, we were a bit surprised, positively, by the number of existing mechanisms that deal with the different aspects of digital policy, from standardization to cybersecurity data. We identified, and I would say it is a rather conservative estimate, more than 1,000 uh, mechanisms. Therefore, there is no lack of uh, mechanisms for digital cooperation. There are some other open issues, and in uh, addressing these open issues, we went through the following steps. First, we work on identifying the gaps in digital governance, then we uh, try to uh, identify digital governance fac functions that would address those gaps. And in the third step, we uh, outline the three models that should be homed for the performing those digital governance functions. This approach of gaps, functions, models uh, provided us with a lot of flexibility and agility. For example, there is almost unanimity in identifying gaps on digital governance and a lot of agreement when it comes to the digital governance functions. But there, there were major differences uh, uh, when it uh, comes to discussion on digital models. And in this flexible uh, structure, it is possible to combine different functions and to combine elements from different models, as we'll see shortly. From uh, these gaps and functions that should address them, we landed to the three main governance models. Internet Governance Plus, 
digital co-governance architecture or co-gov as uh, it is abbreviated and digital commons architecture. We'll now describe them uh, in uh, turn starting with the IGF Plus. IGF Plus attracted the most attention in our consultation and uh, for a few reasons. First, uh, IGF uh, movement and developments uh, are well developed. Uh, IGF Plus would not require developing of anything new which was clearly stipulated by the, by, in the panel's activities. It will be just upgrade of existing mechanisms. And uh, this will be upgrade building or quite a solid infrastructure developed over the last 15 years uh, during the series of internet governance forums ranging from global via regional to national one. Internet Governance Forum is a work in progress and it is uh, in a way in constant innovation and upgrade through the features like uh, uh, dynamic coalitions or remote participation, online meetings, which we are experiencing today and which IGF started almost 15 years ago. Internet Governance Forum is also quite present in developing uh, countries much more than other governance bodies and initiatives. But over the last four to five years, Internet Governance Forum has been to some extent sidelined by other mega events and mega forums. Therefore, there is a need to upgrade the IGF to give it more relevance, more resources, and to improve IGF uh, infrastructure. One of the major advantages of IGF Plus model is that it has a mandate. Today, when it is very difficult, almost impossible, to get the new multilateral mandates, IGF has a mandate in Article 72, which gives the Secretary General almost carte blanche to redesign internet governance uh, in order to meet the demand of the current era. IGF Plus model has a, a following main uh, bodies and the structure. It has advisory group appointed by UN Secretary General, which would build on the ex existing uh, practice of multi-stakeholder advisory group. It would be in a way the main body, main uh, umbrella and decision body of the Internet Governance Forum, agreeing about the theme that should be covered during the annual uh, Internet Governance Forum and also coordinating activities of other bodies. Possible improvement in IGF Plus infrastructure is to increase the uh, leadership level to have a more uh, uh, high-level political officials, civil society representatives, uh, CEOs of the leading tech companies and increase the relevance of the uh, um, advisory group. The second uh, body in this uh, proposed infrastructure is a cooperation accelerator. We already noticed that the question of the lack of cooperation is a huge challenge for the digital uh, governance mechanisms. It is the reason why cooperation Accel accelerator is proposed to accelerate existing uh, links and to develop new links. Among the UN bodies, civil society activists, tech community, but also to make outreach to the major fora which gather the entrepreneurs, uh, tech activists like Web Summit in Lisbon. The idea is to avoid the current situation where, for example, artificial intelligence governance is discussed more or less in the same way at, uh, we counted once, at 10 to 15 bodies. This is fine. We don't need to have one body to discuss, let's say, artificial intelligence. But it would be useful if cooperation uh, accelerator can advise all of these uh, for us to focus on specific issues, on ethics, on security, on human rights, and artificial intelligence is cross-cutting issue. The next uh, part of IGF Plus architecture is a policy incubator, a place which will incubate norms and policies uh, on the initiative of different uh, stakeholders. Let's take uh, example of the contact tracing apps. Con the question of contract tracing app apps is a huge governance issues, issue. And many tech companies, governance, uh, governments, uh, parliaments are trying to find a governance solution. Ideally, such issues should come to the future policy incubator, involve all stakeholders, experts, into discussion what would be ideal norms and policies. 
Policy incubator and Internet Governance Forum in general should not be decision-making bodies in, in sense of adopting rules or norms, but it should discuss uh, optimal rules and norms and offer as a possibility to parliaments, tech companies and other actors for their adoption and implementation in their activities. Observatory and Help Desk is an extremely important part of the IGF Plus infrastructure. It should follow the main trends and developments. It should also coordinate capacity development activities and possibly act as that uh, entry point into the governance space, in, in particular Help Desk. IGF Plus uh, architecture has also uh, uh, envisaged the possibility of having special tracks for each multi-stakeholder group. For example, uh, governments can meet and discuss their particular problems uh, prior to the annual IGF or as a continuous activity during the IGF process. The same applies to tech community, civil society and businesses. The second proposed model is distributed co-governance architecture or co-gov. This model builds on experience of uh, ICON, uh, WWW, consortium, uh, IEEE and mainly internet governance tech bodies and initiatives. Co-gov uh, co structure uh, would work around building the cooperation network around specific issues, let's say the uh, contact tracing app or question of artificial intelligence. Those uh, cooperation networks would be hosted by one or two major actors from international organizations, governments, tech community. The architecture will have also possibility of co uh, coordinating networks, some sort of network of networks, and it would have also supporting flat platform for capacity development and other, and other activities. The third model, which is uh, probably the least developed, is the digital commons architecture. Why it is the least developed in terms of uh, structure and processes and the organization, it addresses one of the key issues of digital governance. It is the question of uh, dealing with commons, and in particular with dealing with data as one of the underlying commons of the modern society. This model is uh, composed of a multi-stakeholder track. Uh, as you can see, multi-stakeholder approach is common for all three models a small secretariat and a bit stronger linking to the UN system than other two models. Therefore, in brief, we have IGF+, we have COGAO, and we have Digital Commons Architecture. If you analyze them carefully, you will find quite a few common points, as I indicated, as multi-stakeholder approach, bottom-up uh, approach, engagement, uh, and capacity development. These six gaps which we identified 10 functions and 3 governance models form the framework for the, for the discussion. We are basically at the turning point on our journey. UN Secretary General will issue a roadmap over the next few weeks and continue this important governance discussion and journey towards creating inclusive, informed and impactful global governance infrastructure. The ultimate question for all of us involved in this process is the question that we posed at the very beginning of this presentation. How to answer growing number of calls for the digital policy and digital governance issues, calls made by countries, companies and citizens worldwide.